You know, you have to show this is where the precedence was set. And basically, the thing that set the precedence was the ballot law commission did a finding. It's like when you try to put on a My name is Larry Rappaport. I'm a state representative of New Hampshire, and with me are, are Carol Vita and her husband, uh, Lucian. Um, we're here on the Obama matter, and we're here to serve the uh, Attorney General with a signed affidavit, notarized affidavit, which states that back in 2009, we met with him to protest the eligibility of uh, Barack Obama and ask him to investigate. At that time, he said he, it, he considered it a federal matter and he refused to investigate. This affidavit just simply states that fact. You get inside, stand right there where, if you can with the uh, oh, he's filming. Hi. We're here to uh, serve papers to the Attorney General, an affidavit, a signed affidavit. Uh, I'm a state representative, uh, Larry Rappaport, and this is a state representative. Carol Vita. And state representative. Lou Vita. And witness Mark Rossetti. If he can't do it, uh, we can accept a substitute. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll find someone. All right. Substitute for Attorney General? Well, um, I am Michael Brown. I'm not a substitute. I work for the Attorney General. Your what name can I is do Michael Brown. 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 Yes. Okay, that's easy. Okay. Yeah. Italian name. <laughs> exactly. And you can accept this? This I don't is know a what signed this is. affidavit. I don't know what this is. It's, you can uh, accept it. Okay, We're back in 2009, uh, back in two, uh, the three of us, that would be uh, Representative Rappaport, Representative Vita, and myself, mm -hmm. uh, who was not a representative at that time, mm -hmm. uh, met with the attorney, uh, uh, State Attorney General uh, Michael Delaney and expressed to him our concerns with the eligibility of um, uh, Obama, uh, Barack Obama, in uh, uh, assuming the, uh, the Role of president, and we uh, were told at that time that this was a federal matter, and that we were uh, we had to go to uh, take this up in another venue. We were uh, essentially just uh, documenting that fact uh, with this notary statement. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you for your time. Yes, we don't need any permission to serve these people. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't think we did. No, we don't. And they have to, when, when you hand them paperwork, they have to accept it. They're served. Okay. Awesome. Done. This is the AG's office. We're headed for the Secretary of State's office. No, we... No, we're not. No, we're, we're not. Conference. We're heading we for the press, press conference. conference. Okay. Uh, I'm Representative Larry Rappaport, and uh, thank you all for coming. And today... Concerned New Hampshire State Representatives delivered a signed affidavit to State Attorney General Michael Delaney stating that in 2009, Representative Larry Rappaport, myself, Mr. Lucian Vita, now a state representative, he wasn't at the time, and Representative Carol Vita, um, he, we met with State Attorney General Michael Delaney and we argued that they believe that we believed that Barack Obama was possibly not eligible to be president of the United States and requested that Attorney Delaney launch an investigation of Mr. Obama's credentials. The three believed that the people of New Hampshire had been defrauded 
by Mr. Obama's candidacy, the Attorney General uh, stated that he believed it was a federal matter and refused to investigate. We believe that according to the United States Constitution, that's Article 2, Section 1, Paragraph 5, I believe, no person except a natural-born citizen or a citizen of the United States at the time of the adoption of this Constitution shall be eligible to the president, to the office of president, neither shall any person be eligible to that office who shall not have attained an age of 35 years and been 14 years a resident of the United States. A natural born citizen, as defined by the U.S. Supreme Court in Minor versus Happersat, Vattel's Law of Nations, and the 2008 Senatorial Resolution, Senate Bill 511, in one is one wherein both parents of whom were citizens of the United States. According to the record, Mr. Obama's father was born in Kenya. He was never a citizen of the United States of America, making Mr. Obama ineligible to be a presidential candidate on the New Hampshire ballot. Our attorney, Dr. Orly Tates, Esquire had previously delivered a written request to the Secretary of State requesting him to review the challenge to Mr. Obama's eligibility to be on the New Hampshire ballot. The Ballot Law Commission met on November 18th to review our complaint. We were represented at that hearing by Dr. Orly Tates, Esquire. Our complaint was denied, but there appears to be an inconsistency in the process of the challenge. According to Assistant uh, Secretary of State Karen Ladd and the Ballot Law Commission, they testified that they can only rule on the ballot petition making sure it is filled out properly and is accompanied by a $1,000 check. They claimed that it is not in their purview to determine if a person is a natural born citizen. However, the inconsistency becomes obvious when the record shows that on November 15, 2007, the Secretary of State's office ruled that a Mr. Sal Mohammed was disqualified, and on July 19, 2011, Mr. Abdul Cape Hassan Esquire was denied a place on the presidential ballot because they were not natural born citizens. Both letters were signed by Karen Ladd, Assistant Secretary of State. Despite what we consider overwhelming evidence, our attorney, Dr. Orly Tates Esquire, was denied by the Ballot Law Commission then was denied a rehearing and then filed an action before the New Hampshire Supreme Court, which was subsequently they denied a rehearing. We can provide outside copies of the challenges. She has currently filed an appeal before the United States Supreme Court. The oath we took when we were sworn in as legislators was to uphold and defend the constitutions of both the United States and of New Hampshire. We believe it is our duty as your representatives to uphold the Constitution and to ensure that anyone seeking the highest office in the land is qualified to be on the New Hampshire first in the nation ballot. Thank you and we'll answer any questions. Larry, has the uh, British Nationality Act of 1948 been introduced? Because the British Nationality Act of 1948 is very explicit in 
the citizenship by descent from the male parent. And the British Nationality Act, if you look in part two of it, you'll see it states where it devolves from the male parent no matter where in the world he was born. So it doesn't mean whether he was born in Hawaii or East Ethiopia. He's still a British subject at birth by virtue of the law of nations. Now this is interesting because I have challenged Senator Rayla on her oath of office relative to this precise thing. This is a constitutional issue. And it's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10. And that's very specific in what it states, because it is a mandate to everyone who has taken, a const uh, uh, taken a, uh, an oath, which I did when I was four years in the Navy, and when I was six years here in the, in the legislature. And I respect both of you, and, and Carolyn, I have respect you for doing what you're doing, because I'm not here to do it. You're doing it here by my agents and servants, as Article 8 says. Well, anyway, back to the British Nationality Act. That is, in Vattel's, as you mentioned, Vattel's the Law of Nations, that is exactly where it says two parents have got to be both uh, of the same, in other words, the father and the mother both have to be of the same citizenship. In this case, it isn't. So all this other nonsense about birth certificates and all this other, that's a total diversion to cloud up the minds of everybody that is here. The issue is, it's a constitutional issue, it's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10. The law of nations must be, and that's a congressional mandate. It says to define and punish. Read Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10. Define and punish. Not only piracies of the sea, but and, A-N-D is a conjunction, and the offenses against the law of nations. That's what we should be doing. This chronic diversion is taking the attention away from the prime constitutional issue, is what I just expressed. But the three, thank you for what me yeah. express. But the, the Attorney General's already, in the Battle Law Commission, has already denied this petition. So where do you go from here? What what recourse do you have? To continue well, we have, to pursue? Uh, we have a bunch, uh, 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 a couple of areas. Yeah. First of all, uh, we've appealed to the Supreme Court. I think that's, and it's the highest law of the land. I believe that the Constitution is first and foremost, nothing supersedes that. Mm -hmm. uh, my argument, uh, any past bills that is do are done in Congress, that doesn't supersede that. Nothing supersedes the Constitution, and as I understand it, I'm not an attorney, but as I understand it, constitutional law trumps uh, case law. Okay. I go six paragraph two. Three mandates in it. And those mandates are, the first one is, it defines itself because it adds the supreme law of the land. And the second, the judges and every are bound thereby. And the third mandate is, anything in the constitutional laws of the several states, which is contrary, notwithstanding, so you're absolutely correct. Well, Nothing trumps the Constitution. Right. Our feeling is that, first of all, this is not a birther issue. In no way, shape, or form are we ever making a, uh, a consideration about where uh, Mr. Obama was born. Our concern is only that he is a natural born citizen. And if he is, uh, fine, let's have a reasoned argument instead of uh, calling us names. And, and we also strongly believe that this is the largest crime that has ever been pulled over on the American people. It's the only office, the presidential office, is the only office in the United States where you are supposed to be a natural born citizen. No other office has that. This is a terrible crime. And the people of New Hampshire and the people of the world have to know that. Also, this is the first in the nation primary state. And if we do not tell the other states exactly what's going on, we should lose that honorable and lofty position. That's why we're here also. What's your name, sir? My name is Mark Rossetti. And where do you live? Manchester, New Hampshire. What, I, I'm still a little confused, though, as to what um, you envision happening next. Um, what do you hope? Um, well, we believe that the Secretary of State should launch an investigation. Mm -hmm. And if it turns out that uh, uh, Mr. Obama mm -hmm. is not qualified to hold the position, then he be uh, denied a place on the ballot. Um, how many how many state representatives' names are on the petition? Well, there is no petition. 
I, you're talking uh, about yeah, the affidavit. The, the, just the three of us, okay. three. because we were. Um, we can't. Pe other people yeah. may agree with us, but they can't swear to what, something that where they weren't present. Okay. Okay. So you and the Vitas. Yes. Were there, 2009, right? Has a grand jury inquisition been considered because a petition of representatives or any people can make a petition to uh, the uh, county attorney for a grand jury? Now let a grand jury make the investigation, and everybody that anybody can bring in evidence. I'll yeah, bring in yes, the evidence we, of the Kenyan legislature, well, which on, on March 25th of 2010, this is the Kenyan records, official records, on page 31, and it's right there for everybody. They are discussing ethnicity as far as the tribal wars going on in Kenya because they're trying to construct a constitution over there. And in it, they said we should we should look toward America for its 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 position on ethnicity because how else would a Kenyan bond mm -hmm. right there in black and white Kenyan bond become president of America? Page thirty one. Well, furthermore, March twenty fifth, two thousand and ten, official records of Kenya. Yeah, Parliament. Uh, Furthermore, we have, a, we have a larger problem than that. In New Hampshire, we're supposed to have a ballot that is free and clear of any of this fraud. So now that this case has bounced from the Ballot Law Commission to the AG, to the court, and then out of our state, the people of New Hampshire are disenfranchised, and their, their, uh, their, their votes have been messed with now on this. And the point is, before the 10th, that, that man's name should be, or anybody that is not a natural born citizen's name, should be taken off of the ballot. And now that it's been taken out of the state of New Hampshire's hands and the people of New Hampshire, they're pretty much demanding that that name be off the ballot. We also have to realize that the uh, Secretary of State Office and the Ballot Law Commission, when they looked into that, um, was certainly neglecting their duties when they said that that was not in their purview. They knew very well that it was in their purview to investigate um, Mr. Uh, uh, anybody who has a, uh, a challenge against them that is not a natural born citizen. And they turned it around and said, no, as, as we said in the press release, that's all they had to do was supply a uh, petition and a check for $1,000. Um, they swore that under oath, and so did their attorneys. So I think that they better take another look at the Constitution and about the, and the New Hampshire Constitution uh, before they make uh, decisions like that that affects um, the most highest office in the land. Might I state that uh, Attorney Cook, the chairman of the Ballot Law Commission, stated in a uh, New Hampshire Business Review article that the jurisdiction did not allow an inquiry or investigation in such matters um, on the advice of counsel. And so uh, they are also stating that they, they have no jurisdiction, which if you look at the booklet that was handed out, you will see that they have absolute jurisdiction. And they've used it before. Yes. And the, the booklet also shows the precedents in the past. This is Representative Lori Pettengill. Do you know those, those two names that are, are listed as people in 2007 were denied a place on the ballot? What the um, Secretary of State's office did or the Ballot Law Commission did to determine that they weren't? They didn't qualify? They're, they're copies of the letters. There's, co there's copies of things in okay. this booklet for you to say. Sam Mugamid had been a, a, a naturalized citizen from Egypt uh, for, for 23 years before he tried to um, be on the ballot. Yeah. Representative Rappaport, I believe you were elected both on the Democratic and Republican sides of the ballots here. Are you, um, are you primarily a Republican or a Democrat, and are any of the representatives here in this effort Democrats, or are they all voting together primary anyway? I was not elected as a Democrat. Yes. My compatriot, uh, Eric Stoll, in the first election ran on both sides. Yes. This is in the 2008 election. I was only on the Republican side. 
May, may I add that um, there was something went out over the legislative email, and I'm sure everyone got it, asking them, uh, all legislators, to join us uh, because it is a constitutional issue <coughs> and not a Republican-Democrat issue. However, not one Democrat came and said that they would join us or even look into the Constitution. Um, this is all you need right here. Look it up. It defines everything that we said to be true, and that is why Mr. Obama is not eligible to be president and should be removed from office. Larry, you mentioned that New Hampshire has the opportunity to lead. Well, it's already leading because the visibility that New Hampshire has nationally is in Arizona, and believe it or not, a Democrat, a Democrat right down there in Alabama has already filed in court to keep this program off the ballot in Alabama. You know that, don't you? Well, you do now. Yeah. And now Georgia has already followed Alabama. Yeah. So smile at the Democrats also. Mm, Georgia has also let nobody else on the Democratic ballot. That has just recently come up. You know, if this was vetted properly from the DNC back in 2008, we would not be here. I submitted two but that was fraud. Of, the, of, the, of those certifications by Pelosi. There's two of them. Yeah. One of them, and, and David's got them up. Scanlon's got them up. Yeah. One of them has got, is the one that went to Hawaii, has the Constitutional in it. The one that the went to the other 49 states, it didn't have it on. That's a violation by the, by the DNC. Yeah. DNC playing games again. And that Double things. Bring it out. Come on. Bring it out. And we wouldn't have been here had that been done properly. Right. It was forced through. And everybody just fell in line. And this man would not be president today. Absolutely. It's a constitutional issue, and it is a, again, I can't say it more emphatically, it's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10. And if those people, all, every, as far as I'm concerned, everyone, in, every one of the Republicans in, in Congress today, where they have a majority, should be removed for violating their oath of office, and their oath is under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 10 because they are compelled, mandated by the Constitution, a delegated power to not only define, but to provide the penalties for piracies on this and offenses against the law of nations. And it's the law of nations which is being totally ignored here because it was the British Nationality Act which had the supremacy in determining the citizenship of the person who is now occupying our White House. Right. And that's what imp it's important because the spin on it is that every time we bring this up and we try to bring up the Constitution, which maybe some people need to read or reread um, in, the, in our legislature and especially in Congress because they're complicit with this president, um, if they would, uh, what their spin is, is that it's a Bertha issue it's or perfect. if you challenge the Constitution. Nowhere in here says anything about race, color, or creed of the president. And it's not a racist issue, as some would have you believe. They're trying to do that as a uh, because they want to duck the issue. And the real issue is constitutional. So unless we stand by this, and it works for everybody, we might as well do what uh, Congress has done and thrown it out. Well, you're correct. They use the term. It's a pejorative term, Bertha. And that's done to cloud the issue. How do you from divide and conquer? And that's one of the debates that if you're any student of divide and conquer. That's what they've done, divide and conquer, and that's just sort of disinformation as well. Isn't the issue that you're raising, though, where his father was born? The issue is whether or not under our Constitution, remember, that's the supreme law of the United States. Mm -hmm. I agree with Mr. Marple about, uh, about the law of nations, but the supreme law in the United States is the Constitution. And by the way, the, the a law which the Supreme Court is supposed to uphold is the Constitution. Not, that's, what, that's the filter through which everything is judged. And um, the only reason that his, father, his father's citizenship uh, is even in consideration is because that affects one's ability to be a natural-born citizen. The common definition 
and this is in the Supreme Court has already decided it, you must have two U.S. parents. And it's perfectly clear uh, in Dreams of My Father, the book which Obama allegedly wrote, he says his father is Kenyan. So he can't be a natural born citizen. This is our issue. It's, it's really totally nonpartisan. As Representative Akronero said, it's not a partisan issue at all. It's a question of whether or not somebody is eligible to be president. Can I ask, uh, so right now you filed an affidavit with Delaney to investigate again. That's right. When did you file that? Uh, about 20 minutes ago. Did you get a response? He's not there. We gave it to a to an assistant. Yeah, we served it to a substitute. And that's in your packet, which I to Michael Brown. His name is Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Yes, that's okay. in our packet. Okay. And I would reiterate for you that the only elected person in our country that must be a natural born citizen is the President of the United States. And that is because he's the Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy. So they, they, there must be 100% allegiance in that position. So we must reiterate again, a natural born citizen in any country, doesn't matter where it is, that person, the person born of two people being born in that country is a natural born citizen and no other. It doesn't matter if Mr. Obama was born in Hawaii, if we cannot prove or if he cannot prove to us that his mother and his father were both from this country. And remember in 2008 there was a challenge to John McCain. Stating the same thing. Excuse me, I, I have to correct that. The parents have to be citizens. The parents do not have to be born in the United States. <coughs> That's correct. Parents the parents have to be citizens. The parents have to be citizens at the time citizens of birth. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, That's correct. Absolutely. That's correct. Uh -oh. And the challenge to um, John McCain was the same thing. He was born in uh, Panama. His parents were both U.S. citizens. They were on a military base or a military facility. That made him a natural born citizen. So... Why would you have a dual thing? So that's okay for McCain, but it's not okay for this president? Either the Constitution works for everybody, or it doesn't work for anybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you being here. Much. If there are any more questions, oh, yes. we're a bunch of us are available. That's all right. Okay. I get that all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I can get a picture. Good work. Sure. Okay. Sure. 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 Sure.